And now, let's welcome the 2016 valedictorian, Zach Spitz. Thank you for the introduction. That saves a lot of time on my part. <laughs> Students, teachers, parents, distinguished guests, anyone dragged here against their will. Thank you for coming to see my speech. We have a commencement ceremony afterwards, so stick around. As I look upon the faces of the graduating class, I see excitement, hope, and genuine fear of the outcome of the presidential election in January. Remember. My advice to you, the graduating class of 2016, with my rich experience of 18 years, four of which I can't remember, and two of which were spent in diapers. Okay, three. Half, is this. If a teacher promises to give you an A in return for mentioning them in your speech, Take that deal. <laughs> Isn't that right, seniorities? I think it's right. <laughs> For as long as I can remember, I've been on a narrow, self-imposed pathway to success. The recipe was simple. Hard work, dedication, and a lot of caffeine. However, my high school experience has taught me there are multiple pathways to success. Now, I'm not claiming to know everything which may come as a surprise to most of my class and some of my teachers. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Merritt, Miss Quigley, I'll admit it, I'm mortal. <laughs> but I want to share how these past four years have shaped my worldview. If all successful people have one thing in common, it's a strong work ethic. Whether it's at the track, in the classroom, or on the job, those who work the hardest will initially become the front runners because they take the most linear path to accomplish a given goal. For many of us, we choose this path because it's what we've been taught our entire lives from teachers and parents alike. Get good grades in school so we can get to a good college, have a good job, live in a good community, and so on. The linear path is also the easiest to comprehend. Hard work plus commitment equals success. The only problem is this formula only works for a period of time. In the long run, the path to success isn't so linear. Life throws curveballs. Let me give you an example. All year, I rode as a varsity lightweight for Newport Aquatic Center. Lightweights have to weigh 150 pounds or less. My team was fast, so the only race we had any concern for was the Junior National Championship Regatta. We got first place at regionals, and we easily advanced to nationals. At nationals, each event was composed of three races, the heat, the semifinals, and the grand finals. We smoked the heat. We had the fastest time across the board. But in the morning of the semifinals, my teammate weighed 1.3 pounds over the, over the limit, and just like that, we were disqualified from the entire competition. Game over. Over the course of the year leading up to the race, no matter how hard I trained, no matter how much I sacrificed, no matter how committed I was to our boat winning, I couldn't have anticipated it would all end that way, that we would never get a chance to race the final race. And the really sad thing is, the team that did end up winning lost to us at regionals. But now let's look at it from the other crew's perspective. The same rule applies. Unexpected events happen that can completely change the path to success. In their case, it made the path more defined because there was less competition to worry about. Now, if you were a bystander, you might say, wow, they just won because of a lucky break. Well, that's false. The first place boat had to put in the same amount of blood, sweat, and tears as we did. So to say they won because of luck is incorrect. I don't believe in the superstitious kind of good or bad luck. As the Roman philosopher Seneca said, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. In the case of the race, the other crew had the hard work under their belt and they were given the opportunity to win. So, fully prepared, they took it. It's about showing up expecting the best and dusting yourself off when it doesn't happen. Bill Gates' first company was a complete failure. Was he just lucky to go on to create the largest software company? No. When Steve Jobs was fired by his own, or his own board of directors, was he just lucky to go on and make Apple the most profitable company in the world? No. When LeBron James and the Cavaliers were down three to one in the finals, were they lucky to come back and beat the Warriors? Yes. The bottom line is you have to be prepared, but also flexible when an opportunity arises and resilient when circumstances are beyond your control. Don't stop preparing for opportunities after a disappointment. 
However, preparing for an opportunity isn't quite so linear either. Passion counts. It makes sense to play to your strengths, but if your passion takes you in a direction that's not so obvious, don't be afraid to give it your best. I'm a small, asthmatic kid who's allergic to everything. <laughs> Summer before high school, I met Scott Wickup for cross country camp, where he taught us to commit to our fullest potential. I decided, to, I decided to commit myself to becoming a varsity athlete, and as a result, I was able to compete on the national level. My story is just one of 265 that are here tonight. We are an amazing collection of passionate, dedicated, resilient young people. I cannot say where my path will truly lead, or where any of you will ultimately end up, but I'm confident that Daniel Black will achieve his goal of becoming a stay-at-home dad. <laughs> <laughs> the potential in our class is tremendous. There is no doubt that we will change the world. It may be in a high elected office or lessons we impart into our future children. It may be a technological breakthrough or an inspiring work of art. Opportunities await. Be prepared. Oh, come on, folks. Give it up. Let's go. That's better. <laughs>